It's January 2nd, 2023, and we're going to take a look at some possible landmark Supreme Court decisions that are going to be occurring uh, this year. This is not a complete list of all the cases that were heard uh, by the U.S. Supreme Court. These are some cases that I've been looking at closely. There may be some um, other cases that will be placed on the calendar at a later date. I will be making a separate video about those, but let's take a look at what we've got uh, right now. Uh, that could be coming up this year. And the first case that we're going to take a look at is Merrill v. Milligan. Now, this was heard way back in October 4th, 2022. And as you can see, it deals with the state of Alabama. Uh, this was from an emergency application before the U.S. Supreme Court by the Secretary of State of Alabama. And it is in regard to congressional redistricting. Uh, as you can see here, this is the map of Alabama uh, in 2010. The congressional districts and then this is the new map uh, after the 2020 census and the question is uh, whether the new map here of 2020 uh, whether the new map um, of Alabama violates the Voting Rights Act and we're going to take a look and see if that um, is what the Supreme Court believes or not. Our next case is National Pork Producers Council versus Ross uh, this was heard on October 11th, 2022. Uh, this is coming out of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And uh, California passed something called Proposition 12 uh, that imposes strict standards on animal confinement uh, for animals like pigs, for example, as you can see here. Um, and the question is, is whether or not the California law violates what's called the Dormant Commerce Clause. Now, that is when a state law... Um, interferes with interstate commerce. That's what the Dormant Commerce Clause is. Uh, does Prop 12 uh, violate this clause? The next case is called Andy Warhol Foundation versus Goldsmith. This is from the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Um, this is whether a work of art is transformative when it conveys a different meaning or message from its source material with regard to copyright law. Um, this photograph of the artist Prince was taken way back in 1980. And then Andy Warhol uh, created these prints right here. Uh, not Prince, but Prince of Prince um, uh, based on this photograph. Well, the um, person who made this photograph, Lynn Goldsmith, is suing the Andy Warhol Foundation, who has the copyright for this art, and is saying that this is copyright infringement. And the Andy Warhol Foundation is saying, no, they have taken uh, this and transformed it into something different, which is not a violation of copyright law. Well, we're going to find out from the U.S. Supreme Court. This is a really big case that has come up called Students for Fair Admissions versus President and Fellows of Harvard. Uh, this is being coupled with another case, Students for Fair Admissions versus the University of North Carolina. And uh, these two cases uh, deal with basically the same thing, whether race uh, conscious admissions violates the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Now, uh, this is uh, a possibility of the U.S. Supreme Court overturning a major case from 2003 called Grutter versus Bollinger. Uh, can race be used as a determining factor, not the determining factor, but a factor in admissions to a university. In Harvard's case, it's a private university. And in the other case that it's coupled with, with the University of North Carolina, in public universities. Axon Enterprises Incorporated versus Federal Trade Commission. Now, this is uh, one of three cases that uh, have some similarities. Um, this was heard on November 7th, 2022. Do federal courts have jurisdiction over a constitutional challenge to the Federal Trade Commission's structure? Or must they first be raised in administrative uh, proceedings? So um, do you have to go through the FTC's uh, administrative judges first to argue their constitutionality? Or can you go straight to the federal courts? This is a similar case. It was heard on the same day. This is the Securities and Exchange Commission versus Cochran. Uh, this is from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, again, whether the U.S. District Courts have the power to consider cases challenging the constitutionality 
of the Security and Exchange Commission's administrative law judges when the SEC has yet to issue a final adjunctive order. Uh, so can do you have to wait for the administrative law judges to make a ruling, or can you go straight to federal court? Holland versus Brackeen. Uh, this case was heard on November 9th of 2022. This, again, is coming from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. There's a lot of layers to this, but basically uh, the question is, is whether the Indian Child Welfare Act is constitutional or is it a violation of the Tenth Amendment, uh, the non-delegation doctrine, um, and the due process clause of the Fifth Amendment. Now, when we're talking about the Tenth Amendment, we're talking about the powers that are reserved to the states. And the non-delegation doctrine is the idea that legislative power or lawmaking power cannot be uh, delegated to a different branch of government. So there's a lot of different layers to this. Also, um, <clears throat> it is also dealing with Congress's limited authority under the Indian Commerce Clause as well. So there's a lot of different layers with this. And on top of that, this is a consolidation of four other uh, cases that are going before the U.S. Supreme Court. The United States versus Texas. Uh, no, it's not a war. <laughs> this was heard on November 29th, 2022, uh, again, out of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, and this case concerns whether a state has the ability to challenge the Department of Homeland Security's guidelines of civil immigration law in the federal courts and whether the guidelines are in violation of federal law. Okay, so again, this is very similar to the Axon Enterprise case and the uh, one uh, dealing with the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, can you go directly to federal court uh, or do you have to go uh, through uh, the, the Department of Homeland Security's guidelines uh, first? And on top of that, there's a second question in this, whether the guidelines set up by the Homeland Security uh, Department are in violation of federal law. This is probably one of the most widely um, uh, talked about cases this year. It's called 303 Creative versus Elanis, and this is coming from the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals. It was heard on December 5th of 2022, and the question is here uh, whether applying a public accommodation law to compel an artist to speak or to stay silent violates the free speech clause of the First Amendment and does it violate the free exercise clause of the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution? Now, this is um, a case uh, uh, about a woman who uh, has her own company, um, graphics art design company. She creates websites and stuff like that. Uh, she is uh, expanding her business into making websites for weddings, but uh, due to her Christian faith, she is refusing to do any wedding websites that deal with gay marriage. And uh, the state of Colorado is compelling her, if she wants to stay in business, uh, to accommodate uh, same-sex couples. Uh, she says that she is an artist and she runs her company according to her faith. And that is a violation, uh, not only of her free speech, but her free exercise of religion as well. So this is a, a very, very closely uh, watched case in the Supreme Court. This is also a very closely watched case. Uh, this was heard on December 7th of 2022. It's called Moore v. Harper, and it's coming from the North Carolina Supreme Court. And uh, this is dealing with something that is called the independent state legislature theory. Um, whether a state's judicial branch uh, may nullify uh, the regulations governing the manner of holding elections for senators and representatives prescribed by the legislature thereof, and, and the legislature meaning the state legislature, and replace them with gui uh, regulations of the state court's own devising based on vague state constitutional provisions purportedly vesting the state judiciary with the power to prescribe whatever rules it deems appropriate to ensure fair and free elections. Um, to make this really simple, um, the North Carolina legislature which is predominantly Republican, drew up congressional districts uh, for the state. Um, the Democrat-leaning uh, Supreme Court of the state ruled that the um, 
congressional map, the new congressional map is not constitutional. And so the Supreme Court of the state has said, no, you have to do it a certain way. This is testing out what's called the independent state legislature theory, um, because in the Constitution, it says that the legislature of a state makes the congressional districts, okay, not the judicial branch of a state. Now, the question is, is whether or not the judicial uh, branch of a state is a part of the legislative process if the state court deems that the state process is unconstitutional. So this is going to be a very interesting case. Um, and it's probably going to hold, you know, put this theory to rest. Is it a theory or is it going to be a doctrine uh, after this ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court? Now, these last three cases uh, have yet to be heard by the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, this first one is called In Re Grand Jury, and it is scheduled to be heard on January 9th of 2023. This is coming from the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Um, this is whether a communication involving both legal and non-legal advice is protected by attorney-client privilege, where obtaining or, or providing legal advice was one of the significant purposes behind the communication. So the background of this case is that a, a, a law firm was served with uh, a grand jury subpoenas requesting documents and communications in a criminal investigation of its client. Um, uh, the names of the firm and the company were redacted in the proceedings, um, so we don't have those names. Um, the, the company and the law firm produced some of the requested material, but withheld some other documents citing attorney-client privilege. Uh, and um, the law firm claimed that some of the protected documents were dual purpose communications, meaning that the firm was both preparing a company's tax returns and providing legal advice at the same time. Now, since you, you know, you do have attorney client privilege, but this company is also having legal advice at the same time. Is all of this being protected under attorney client privilege? This is going to be a very interesting case. Um, on whether or not the uh, grand jury can um, uh, obtain this, this type of uh, documentation. Now, this is a, another case. It's not a war uh, <laughs> between two states. Uh, this is New York versus New Jersey. There have been a lot of Supreme Court cases in American history that have been uh, New York versus New Jersey or New Jersey versus New York. Uh, they're always going to the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, this is an original jurisdiction um, a dispute between two states. So it went straight to the U.S. Supreme Court. And it deals with um, what's called the Waterfront Commission, uh, which is an interstate compact uh, between New York and New Jersey. Um, and when you have an interstate compact, it has to be approved by Congress. This has been around for a very, very long time. Well, the state of New Jersey wants out of this compact. And the question is, is whether or not New Jersey can leave an interstate compact that it shares with New York. Well, we're going to find out from the U.S. Supreme Court. And that case between New York and New Jersey is going to be heard on February 27th of 2023. Now, this last case, um, as of January 2nd, has not had uh, a calendar date uh, assigned to it yet for oral arguments. Um, this is a very, very uh, interesting case. It's called Jack Daniels Properties Incorporated versus VIP Products LLC. And this is coming out of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And it deals with a dog toy, which is interesting. And the question is whether humorous use of another's trademark as one's own on a commercial product have First Amendment protection from trademark infringement claims. So uh, this is uh, Jack Daniels, uh, uh, which is a brand of whiskey in the United States, very famous brand, very iconic looking bottle. Um, and of course, the label is one of the most famous uh, labels of any product in the United States. And then over here, you have a dog toy. And you can see the dog toy is kind of a spoof on the Jack Daniels bottle. It says here, Bad Spaniels, the old number two on the Tennessee carpet. So it's it's kind of a funny um, um, uh, product that mimics the Jack Daniels product. Well, Jack Daniels property is suing 
uh, VIP products, which makes the dog toy, saying that this is trademark infringement. Uh, VIP products is saying, wait a minute, uh, we're doing this. We're not, we're not selling whiskey. Uh, we are making a humorous um, interpretation of your product. Um, and by the way, this company also does um, uh, dog toys of other things like Coke products, Seven Up, other types of liquor and whiskey and beer and other products like that. So in a humorous fashion. So this is going to be a very interesting question about trademark infringement. Now, there are possibly going to be some other cases that are going to go before the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, we don't know them all yet. I will uh, put a link below uh, for a follow-up to this video um, uh, about some other cases that I think could have the potential of being landmark cases. But this is just a brief overview of what we know now uh, in 2023 about cases that could have the potential of becoming landmark cases by the U.S. Supreme Court.